I went to visit a friend up in Tampa this past weekend and we watched Spy Kids, the very first one from 2001. And it was very interesting to re-experience it, to, to say the least. I had this movie as a kid. I had it, it was one of the first DVDs I ever owned. When DVDs came out, it was a it was a big deal having any movie and having access to watch it whenever you want. And so of course, I had like the, the oldest movies I remember having uh, back then were um, like Spy Kids, The Animal, and like Nutty Professor 2. Just some random, random movies. Not even like that great, but um, when you're a kid you have, you have what you have and you, and you experience the shit out of it. So I think I watched Spy Kids as a child at least probably like 15 or 20 times. A lot. I watched it a shitload. And um, rewatching it now as an adult, like 20 years later, was just really... I don't know why this chair squeaks squeaks so much squeaks so much, um, but uh, yeah. So it was really it was really funny rewatching it. Uh, I just wanted to get into what I how I basically feel about it and what it was like seeing through a lot of the things that I kind of just ignored as a kid or didn't really care about as a kid. As a kid, what I I'll, I'll you know say what I liked about it and then I'll say what I couldn't stand about it because there was a lot that uh, a lot that I completely forgot about as far as how, how, how off the rails it can get. Um, what I really liked about it is Robert Rodriguez has such a stylish way of directing. As a director, he is very clear about what he wants and, and is so good at like creating visual set pieces, obviously. He, he gets um, a little excessive um, in some ways, but it's, it works so well for a lot of his movies. I love From Dusk Till Dawn. Um, I've always wanted to see like Desperado and a lot of those other, I think that's what it's called, Desperado with Antonio Banderas as well. And uh, uh, I love a lot of his stuff. I really love uh, that that kind of way of telling a story and that uh, over the top aspect of it. So I did love that. The, you know, the sequence where Carmen and Juni are on the jetpacks and they're flying around and being chased by the the thumb thumbs or whatever. Um, just saying that sounds, I, sounds I, I feel so dumb saying that. We'll get into that in a bit, but the sequences of them flying around, even though the CGI has aged like, you know, milk that's been left outside for far too long, um, it's it's still got a lot of really cool moments and action and action sequences, despite the CGI looking like you know PlayStation Two graphics. So, the um, yeah, the, the, that was one of my favorite things about it. I thought the cast. I think the cast is actually really great. I think the kids, uh, Daryl Sabara and Alexa Vega, who play. The main kids, as well as Antonio Banderas and Carla Gugino, Carla Gugino, um, they're they're great. I think the main that main family is great. It's awesome that Danny Trejo is in it. Cheech is in it. Mike Judge is in it. I didn't know that. As I obviously didn't really know Mike Judge as a person as much as his shows when I was a kid. But now that I've watched so much of his his work at this point, Mike Judge being in it is just so random, and it feels like it feels like he's in there as a, as a favor to his friend Robert, you know, Robert Rodriguez is like, oh, you want to be in my, my film, man? Um, so the cast is actually in all of the Spy Kids movies to be in those first three, at least there are some insane, like juggernaut names in it, which is, which is great. I do like that about it as well. I, uh, I kind of like some of the campiness of it. Um, to some extent, the camp, the campiness in that kind of movie that's, it's made for kids. As a kid, I, I loved all that stuff. I think I liked the, you know, excitable, rambunctious nature of, of how just kind of ridiculous a lot of the, the, the acting is and a lot of the dialogue is. It was easy to get. I don't think there was a single moment, as far as if, if you have kids and you were thinking of showing them this, it's great. I think it's great for kids, in all honesty. Um, so that's kind of something that I notice is, is the campiness is still there. As an adult, I kind of roll my eyes at it, but I think the... Uh, I think the main elements of that, how he, he doesn't really apologize for that. What's cool is Robert Rodriguez went full force into, into um, you know, go, going silly with it. And, and I don't mind that at all, uh, for, especially for a kid's movie. It's kind of expected, for especially for a 90s, early 2000s kid's movie. That was everywhere. Everything in the 90s and 2000s was really corny and, and over the top. If you watch any commercials from the 80s or 90s, 2000s, like that whole three decades was just a lot of like weird cringy stuff i have it has, and it has a special place in my heart when you grow up with that it's so normal that you don't really see how how ridiculous it can be um but yeah i think i think those are some of my favorite um 
parts of it. I really, I did love that stuff. I, I'm, I'm not even gonna lie. I thought, I thought all that stuff was pretty enjoyable. And even though my, uh, my friend who I was visiting wasn't, you know, he was kind of like just watching it here and there whenever he, whenever he felt like it. I was kind of, you know, pretty much like invested in it the entire time. And it was, it was interesting seeing that. So yeah, I think, I think there was a lot of, a lot of highlights and it's not, you know, despite having a five, six out of 10 on IMDb, I have some info up here. I think it's a five, six, right? Yeah. Um, that's not a, an unfair score. It's really not the best movie. I would give it like a six, six, five. It's like a six overall to me. Um, cause, cause the, it's not though it's not the worst movie that you'll ever see. There's some awful movies compared to Spy Kids and at least Spy Kids has some kind of like straightforward point that it's trying to make. It's literally just trying to do, Oh, James Bond and mission impossible with, with children, which in all honesty, it, it, it does that very well. It absolutely nails it. I respect Robert Rodriguez's, you know, desire to put his Hispanic influence in a lot of his work as well. Like the, the family is, and all the characters are obviously a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of Hispanic characters. And I, and I, I think that's awesome that he does something so personal and something that's, that's a part of him in that way. It says right here, I'm actually, I got the trivia and I have some info pulled up here. So I kind of want to skim through this a little bit as well. Um, the characters in the film Gregorio, Carmen, and Junior are named after family members of Robert Rodriguez. So that's, it is clearly like a little passion project of his. And it says right here, actually, the thumb thumbs are based on a drawing that Robert Rodriguez did as a child. I think that stuff is really cool. I think he put so much of himself into that and didn't, you can tell that he didn't really like give a shit about, um, you know, how that would come off. And, and I respect that. I respect anybody that puts so much of themselves into, into their work and into their films. Um, now that I've gotten all that out of the way, I, I do, you know, respect those aspects of it, but there are so many other things that rewatching it, I was, it was a lot of questionable decisions, basically. To, to me, there was so much questionable stuff going on as far as just how strange um, a lot of the choices are. In my opinion, despite Alan Cumming being a terrific performer, Alan Cumming, right? I don't want to mispronounce his name. Yeah, Alan Cumming. I know his name. Um, I love that guy. I think he's one of my favorite actors in anything I see. I know he's done a lot of theater and he's done, um, he's just very good at those types of like eccentric characters. He is fantastic as Floop. However, the character of Floop is, is, and the whole Floop's Flooglies or whatever the hell it's called. I, I don't even know what it's called. Like, it's just so weird. It is so bizarre. Like, watching all that stuff was... I wonder if he based a lot of those things on childhood drawings as well, cause, or childhood story that he made, because that shit is fucking weird. If you were, like, tripping on some hallucinogenic, or even if you're just very high like I was on, on weed, you're, you're going to be... You're going to be a little, like, just bugged out by those moments when, when they show his, his TV show and all of his characters... It's um, no different than all the like weird, cringy decisions that Tim Burton made in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It's that same level of like, like what the hell is all of this crap? In my opinion, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the Willy Wonka remake that Tim Burton did in, I don't know, five, whenever that came out, I think all of the sequences of the Oompa Loompas and a lot of the just general choices he made in that are some, it's some of the weirdest, cringiest stuff I've ever seen in cinema. It is just fucked up, like how, how weird a lot of that crap can be so the floop stuff and and all of that that character and his whole world was just rubbing me the wrong way and all that stuff felt like it felt like they were two separate movies it felt like you have this you have this really awesome spy kids you know action you know mission impossible-esque um story and then all of a sudden it's like it, it's going back and forth the a and b side you know parts of that are are the the b-side is is floop and all of his weird shit so it just felt like they were completely different things the floops floops fluglies or whatever looked it, it was like you know in that same realm of of disney channel movies and uh yeah disney channel original movies and just like very weird stuff from the 90s oh come on now yeah a lot of the floop stuff felt like it was a completely separate movie and it was in its own realm of like 90s that 90s just bizarre things approach to to a children's story a lot of things that they geared ge that were geared towards kids in the 90s 2000s was um just really out there i mean if you didn't think we were all weirded out or, or or thrown off by spongebob squarepants when that first came out you're dead wrong like it was a pleasant surprise because i thought that was going to be just a 
one-off weird fucking show that would never really um, go anywhere. At least that's like the what I remember it being as a kid. I just remember being like, just what the what the hell is this shit? You know. So um, not all of them are are crazy su successful, and not all of them hold up, obviously. But yeah, all the all the floop stuff was just weird. The thumb thumbs. It, it, it kind of made me sick. It almost makes me sick, like, looking at it. It's just so strange. It literally makes me feel ex extremely, like, off, basically, every time I see that stuff. I don't know why. I don't, maybe that's just me, and I'm just, like, focusing on how I felt about it so much. But it really was some of the j just weirdest shit I've seen in any movie, I think. Um, so I guess I made my point with that. I think a lot of the stuff with the story was was interesting, but there 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 were so many like there were just too much. There was too much Deus Ex Machina in the in the sense that there are so many moments of like oh well that that worked out in the end. I mean at the very end of the fucking movie when the fam the four peop the you know the four family members are all about to fight the spy kids robots that. Um, Floop's assistant, I forget his name, the guy played by the, the guy from Monk. I forget his name too, fuck. But, um, I think his name was Minion? Yeah, his name was literally, his. I'm not saying that he was his Minion, his character was literally yeah, called Alexander Minion. So, um, so yeah, the, the, the spy kids, when the family's about to fight, the spy kids that Minion was trying to develop to take over the world or whatever and use them for evil, um, Danny Trejo just burst through the window out of nowhere. Now, if you watch the sequence when Carmen and Junie are driving the, you know, little model airplane over to the castle, there is no way to get up to the windows. I don't mean to break the realism of a movie like Spy Kids. It's like, who gives a shit? But Danny Trejo just bursting through the top, the, the that window of the high, like, tower that they were all in, it's like, how the fuck did he get up there? How the hell... Was he was he like see in some kind of secret compartment with the with the ship or something like or with the uh, the model plane that they were flying like where how in the hell did he burst through the window you know just like little things like that where it's like and he didn't really what's funny is they showed that and it was this huge like stylistic scene and and it didn't really do anything like I don't know where Floops just like oh yeah no I know how to fix it. and pushes like a couple of buttons and then fixes it and it's like solved out of nowhere so Danny Trejo bursting through the window actually contributed zero it, it was there was no point to it so there's a lot of you know little things like that and again in a children's movie I guess it's a it's a bizarre um, thing to to criticize that because it's like who gives a shit right but you know you watch a Pixar movie or any any like legitimately well-made children's movies all the story is still there just because it's made for kids doesn't mean it has to be a piece of crap or or be you know uh, thrown together like that. So, of course, those are those are my main criticisms of it. Like, those are the things that stand out to me is obviously some some parts of the story were ridiculous. It's funny how some things in that haven't aged. Like, when you realize, as, as an adult, how I, like, when I look at the way the world is, there, there are just inevitable things that I look at differently. The, the sequence in the beginning where uh, Junie's dad, you know, the Gregorio, Antonio Banderas' character, is dropping the kids off at school, and he's he's saying bye to the to his son Junie, and some like big, tall, like beefy dude is giving him shit, and he has this fantasy where he like punches the guy and throws him through a window somehow, like a wind, like 20, 30 feet away, and um, then it cuts back to him, and he just kind of like deals with the guy giving him shit, and then Junie's like all upset that his father didn't like stand up for himself. It's supposed to be like, oh, my dad's kind of a not a bitch, but he's like, oh, he just, like, people can walk all over him. And as an adult, I'm thinking, like, what, you're you're upset that your your dad didn't get charged with assault? Like, you know, it's just funny how, like, late, like, or 90s and 2000s stuff, just older stuff in general, and obviously because so many laws have changed at this point, of course, 2023, there's so many things that have changed in the last 20 years. Um, you know, a lot of those things just don't, they don't come off the same way. Like, someone backing down from a fight nowadays is, yeah, I don't want to end up in jail for the night, kid, you know? So, um, these are, like, very, you know, I don't want to say these are very superficial criticism criticisms, but that's just, like, what I'm saying on the surface. You know, um, I just wish, the reason that the, the flute being so weird and why, all, and why it rubs me the wrong way, why it's, um, all that stuff is just kind of out there is it would have been cool if it was just, like, a normal thing what if they made him like a mr rogers type of character or a character where he's like literally supposed to be this wholesome you know kind of uh tv show children's t television show host 
and uh, that that could have been if they just kept it normal. I think that would have been a lot more interesting, um, and would have been a little more you know I would have add more realism to that universe. The whole series of movies is fucking weird, obviously too. Like the second movie is off the rails, and the third one is. Oh man, it is off the track completely. The third one is completely like in another realm of of like the kind of movie it was. And what's funny is as a kid, that being like a 3D movie, I loved Spy Kids 3. The 3D was garbage. Everything 3D was garbage back in the day until like Avatar in 2009. All like 3D movies were kind of shit to me. But um we loved it. We loved every bit of it. And I think what I'm trying to say with this video and why I wanted to make this is cuz it's so, it's always very interesting to revisit nostalgia, you know, to have that bit of nostalgia and to revisit things um, that you that you enjoy, enjoyed so much as a kid. It's always incredible to re-experience it and see, was it actually decent or was I, you know, just a dumb kid that liked everything? Because you like everything when you're a kid. Um, I thought that was... I thought that was such an interesting experience seeing what I still liked about it and seeing what you know, I could just see through, obviously. The, the the adult in me can't can't just ignore all the all the weird, stupid bullshit that, that happens in any movie, not just spy kids. But yeah, I thought it was a really interesting experience and I think what I'll say is it's it's really it, it's always really fun to revisit things that you liked as a kid, especially if you watched it a lot. There's still a couple of other movies and I might do other videos for those. There's a couple of other movies that I've been wanting that I rewatched so much as a kid that I've been wanting to uh, revisit now all these years later and um whether i do that or not is you know obviously is is a, a whole thing but uh yeah i just wanted to talk about this a little bit because i thought the movie was so good and bad at the same time like what i'll say is spy kids is such a good bad it's 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 you know what moist critical what a lot of people would say is fun bad there's always fun bad stuff too so spy kids is kind of one of those movies you could throw on in the background catch some moments in it that are decent ignore it because it's not good enough to really like be invested in that much um but it's still fun it's 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 the epitome of like a fun kids movie to me so um yeah i mean a lot of other people liked it at the time too because this movie had a 35 million dollar budget and it grossed 112 million so it essentially tripled its you know budget <laughs> which is amazing that's fucking amazing gross worldwide was 147 million nine hundred thirty four thousand one hundred eighty. So, to say it was a success is an understatement, I suppose, but that movie just had killer advertising, very cool uh, little, you know, moments in it, and cool, uh, like I said, stylized action sequence that Robert, sequences that Robert Rodriguez absolutely knocks it out of the park with those things. I want to watch some more of his films, and uh, I want to do more of these videos where I talk about stuff, because this, uh, this is interesting to me. If you... Uh, watch Spy Kids as a kid and want to leave something in the comments, I would love to, to get a conversation going about this because this is one of my, the, one of the more interesting things that I've revisited all these years later compared to other other movies and TV shows that I've, that I've jumped into. And um, I, I'm really glad I rewatched it is all I'll say. So definitely check it out. If you have Netflix, it's on Netflix right now as of October 25th, 2023. Um, yeah. Super fun flick. Check it out if you have kids. And I will see you guys at the next movie review video or whatever this ends up being called. All right, take it easy.